Welcome back to my Roblox GUI tutorial series. My name is Braldev, and in this episode, we'll be discussing about UI constraints and size modifiers. So when we've been working with GUI elements inside of our Roblox games, we've had to maintain the size of these GUI elements to make them look good inside of our Roblox games, regardless of how big or how small our screen is, whether we're playing on a phone or whether we're playing on a TV, it doesn't matter. But what if that's not enough? What if we want to have more control over our size modifiers to be able to scale our objects as we want them to, or to be able to automatically rescale them, or even add size constraints to make sure that GUI elements don't become too big or don't become too small. That's the purpose of some of these instances that Roblox has provided to us to make sure that we can maintain the size of our GUI elements. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to do inside of this tutorial with the instances that Roblox has provided to us. So what I'm going to do is go to starter GUI and I'm going to insert a screen GUI and I'm going to insert a frame and move it to the center just like this. So the first element that I'm going to show is called a UI scale. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign on the frame and search up a UI scale just like this. And this only has one property, which is called scale. Now, the basic idea behind UI scale is that it takes the GUI element and all of its descendants and it scales it proportionally so that it maintains the size while also scaling it upward or downward. So if I were to change the scale of, let's say, from one to two, then what it's going to do is it's going to double the size of the GUI element. And if I were to do it with three, then it's going to keep doing that. We can even do it the opposite way by reducing the size of it in half. And what we can do with this actually is change the anchor points to 0.5 and 0.5 and then move it to the center just like this so that when we change the UI scale, it's going to change the scale from the center of the frame rather than the top left corner. So this is a pretty neat feature with UI scale. And one use case that I can see with this is if you were to use tween service, to smoothly animate the size of a frame with its descendants. And I think that's a really good use case of using it. Now, the next object I want to show is called a UI size constraint. So what I'm going to do is delete this UI scale and I'm going to hit the plus sign and I'm gonna insert a text label. So as you can see with this text label, it's currently bigger than the actual frame itself. So it's clipping outside of this GUI element. But what if we wanted a way to automatically resize the frame to make it so that it fits with all the GUI elements that are contained inside of it? We can do that by using a property called automatic size, and by default, it's set to none. But if we were to drop this down, then we have three options here to choose which axis we want to affect the size for. So what we can do is select X. So as you can see, the frame's size automatically adjusted to fit the size of the text label. And if I were to, let's say, insert a grid layout, and let's say really quickly, I wanted to change the background color to something different. If I were to quickly duplicate all these text labels, then as you can see, the frame is automatically adjusting its size to reflect these text labels. But as of right now, I have it set to X only. So if we were to set it to X and Y, then as you can see, the frame is now adjusting its size to reflect on all of these um, text labels, which I think is a pretty neat feature. So now there's two more instances that I wanna show you called UI size constraint and UI text size constraint. So I'm just going to take this frame and make it invisible and I'm going to insert a text label and move it to the center. So the first object is a UI size constraint. And basically what this does is we can determine the maximum size and the minimum size of a GUI element so that it doesn't become too big or too small. So if I were to, let's say, change the max size to something like uh, 100 and 100 for Y as well, then it can't be any bigger than 100 pixels and 100 pixels on the X and Y direction. So for our text label, if we were to, let's say, change the size of this to 500 and 500, then it's not going to get any bigger than 100 and 100, which is what we initially said. So if we were to, let's say, make this 50 instead, then it actually is going to become smaller because it does fit within the range of our max size and min size. So that's what UI size constraint does. And the next thing I wanna show is called a UI text size constraint. So a UI text size constraint is basically the same thing as a UI size constraint, 
except instead of for a GUI element, it's for a text within a text label. So um, I'm just going to change the size of this to 250. And for this text size, we have a max text size and a min text size. So if I were to change this to let's say 40, and I were to change the min text size to 30, then we can only fit the text within the bounds of these two properties here. So if I were to, let's say, go down here and turn on text scaled, then what's going to happen is if I scale this, the text label is not going to change size because it's past 40. But if we were to scale it down, then it's going to go down to 30, but then it's not going to go anything lower than 30. And so that's what a UI text size constraint does. And uh, there can definitely be some practical use cases for using this. Okay, now the last object that I want to show you is called a UI aspect ratio constraint. And basically what this does is it maintains a width to height aspect ratio of a GUI object regardless of the size of that element. So uh, this is really useful if let's say we have a image label and we don't want to stretch out the image label to make it look really weird and non-proportional. We can use a aspect ratio constraint to maintain the size of it to make it look good. So if I were to show you an example of this, I'm just going to quickly disable the text label. I'm going to insert a image label just like this. And we need to take an image from the toolbox. So I'm just going to go to view. I'm going to open up the toolbox and I'm just going to pick a random uh, decal from here. So I'm just going to right click copy asset ID and then change the image of this to um, our image. So by default, we can scale the size of this to make it look stretched out like this if we want. But if we want to maintain its aspect ratio, then what we can do is hit the plus sign and we're going to insert a UI aspect ratio just like this. And now if we were to change the scale of this, we can see that it's locked to be diagonal because we now added a aspect ratio constraint to it. So we can't stretch it out or make it non-proportional. We can only have it within this width to height aspect ratio when we're using these GUI elements. And I think this is a really practical use case of using this. So we've just went over some examples of using these size constraint modifiers. And I hope you found this video to be helpful when it comes to being introduced with these um, size constraint modifiers that you can use for your own Roblox games. So for today's learning objective, I want you to recreate this HUD panel on the left side here. Uh, so we have things like our health bar and a coins counter on the bottom of it. And we also have an image label to show the, the health and also the currency. So once you have this down, what I want you to do is I want you to use these objects that I taught you to maintain an aspect ratio for this panel to make sure that when we size it, so if I were to rescale this frame, then it's going to maintain the size of the bar and also the image labels on the left of these bars as well. And that's the important thing about this. It's to be able to maintain the size of these GUI elements that are contained within this frame using the things that I've taught you with things like aspect ratios, text size constraints, UI scales, and things like that. Because let me show you what happens if I were to get rid of these size constraints. So if I were to get rid of these, and if I were to now rescale the frame, you can see that the image labels are being stretched out to make it look unnatural. And we don't have a way to maintain the aspect ratio or the text size of these elements. So that's what I want you to try and do for this learning objective. And as an added challenge, if you do manage to do this, I want you to use UI scale to have this toggle HUD button. So when you press it, then it's going to use tween service to basically just hide it. And if we were to click it again, then it's going to pull back the HUD panel just like this. So that is what I want you to do for today's learning objective. And if you have something that's similar to this, then I think you're on the right track to becoming a better Roblox developer by being able to maintain your aspect ratios for your GUI elements. So that's pretty much going to be it for this episode. Big shout outs to my Patreon members for the support. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Take care.